Hey guys, so today's video is going to be on the look that I'm wearing right now. It is definitely not a subtle look. <laughs> if you do not like color or color is not for you, then this look is not going to be for you because I use a lot of color. It's kind of a mixture in between sort of what I did with Havoc and kind of what I did for one of my spring looks, but I was really inspired when I got um, this BH um, Cosmetics palette in the mail because this red shade right here is so pretty and I just love using like bright bold colors like that. So I got in some inspiration to use that and to do a look around it. Um, I love reds, burgundies, um, oranges, those kinds of things. Those, those types of colors look really good on green eyes. Um, so yeah, with no further ado, I'm going to get into the video. So if you'd like to see how I got this look, then just keep watching. Okay, so I'm going to be starting off by priming my eyelids. I'm so, first of all, let me just tell you, I'm so sorry if this looks weird and shaky. I didn't realize that the autofocus button was on on my camera, and when it's on but it's in the tripod, it does this weird shaky thing. So I'm so sorry in advance for that. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I'm priming my lids with the Urban Decay Primer Potion, and I'm going to go in and set that primer down with my Real Techniques setting brush as well as a Maybelline Fit Me powder, just so we have a nice smooth base to work with when we put these colorful shadows on top. Then I'm going to go in with my Sigma E40, and you guys already know the two shadows that I use almost every single time that I do my makeup. That is going to be Creme Brulee and Peach Smoothie, both by Makeup Geek. I'm using these as a transition shade, but I also want to put a little bit of color onto the lid because I am going to be doing kind of an orangey red look. So I just dip my brush into both of those two colors, mix them together, add them to my crease and a little bit higher, and then blend away. You guys know the drill. And now I'm going to go in with this Morphe brush, and I'm going to use the BH Cosmetics Modern Mattes palette. This palette is so pretty. It's all colored, but they're all mattes. And I'm going to use this really pretty red shade. This is actually what inspired this, this entire look because this shade is so pretty. And I'm going to go in very slowly starting out. I'm going to apply this to my lid and then up into my crease. I'm going to be putting a pigment over my lid, so I'm not too concerned about where the actual shadow is on my lid. I'm more concerned about where this is going in my crease. The thing with working with colors is that you want to start off slowly so that you can manage the color. So you don't have too much product too fast and then you've got a mess of a look and you can't work with it. So just start really, really slow and add gradually because you can always like add but you can't take away as easily. So I'm just blending out all this into my crease. Sometimes I find that I have to hold my eye because this particular eye droops down a little bit lo lower than the other eye. So I find that by holding my eye up like that helps me to get the brush like in there really good. So I'm going to go back in with my E40 and I'm just going to make sure that everything is nice and blended so that there are no harsh lines because that's one thing with color. If you have harsh lines, you're going to be able to see it. Oop, quick sip of some sparkling water. I like the plain one, by the way. And I'm going to go in with my MAC 226, and as soon as I can find the shadow, oh, there it is, Brooke, the, um, uh, the shade Bitten by Makeup Geek, and I'm going to go in and take this right over top of that red shade, and I'm going to keep it kind of close to the lid, and I'm going to go up into the crease, just not quite as high, because I want you to be able to see that really bright, pretty red-orange color. Like I said, just building the color slowly is the key to working with colors because you want to make sure that you are able to um, add the color and but, but still kind of keep control of the look. So I'm going to go in with this. Um, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize my camera wasn't recording. I had already put down a layer of it, but I'm going to go in with this Luxie brush, some MAC Fix Plus to wet the brush, and then this MAC pigment called Blue Brown. If you're interested in trying MAC pigments, a lot of them have these trial sizes, which is awesome because you don't have to buy the entire thing. So once that dries, I'm going to go right over top of that with another pigment. This pigment is a little bit of an older pigment by MAC. But basically, it's just blue and green glitter. And I was so upset when I was doing this look. I dropped it on my beauty room floor and, like, glitter went everywhere. So I hardly have any left because that thing was full. But with that same wet brush, I'm just going to go right over top of that just to kind of emphasize the blue. Then I wanted a little bit more of a pop of color. And I have another broken shadow from MAC. This is called Water Nymph, I believe. I keep it um, on top of my 
vanity just until I find something that replaces it because it is broken and there's just barely any left. But I'm just going to go right over top of those two other pigments and I'm going to keep this in the center of my lid. And now I'm going to go back in with Bitten, and I'm just going to make sure that there are no super harsh edges. I know that when you have a pigment and then a color like that, obviously you're going to have a little bit of a, um, an edge because you're going to have your sparkly shadow right up against the matte shadow. And that doesn't really bother me too much because when I open my eye, you don't really see that anyway. But I just want to make sure that everything looks blended. And I also focus some more of that color on the outer V. Now I'm going to go in and start my face. This is going to be the High Spreadability Fluid Primer by the brand The Ordinary. I'm going to take this in and work it into the areas where my foundation tends to crease, like my forehead and sometimes the sides of my nose. And next up, I'm going to go in with my favorite foundation of life. This is the Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo Foundation. I am in the shade 48 Light. I'm going to take that with my damp beauty blender and just start working that into my skin. I find that if I have a really bold eye look, I like to use a very full coverage foundation because I feel like it makes the eyes stand out since I do have freckles. Um, I don't really want to be able to see those freckles when I have a nice bold eye because that's the whole focus of the look. So I'm just blending this all in. I'm going to go in with my primer. I totally forgot to show you guys the primer, I guess. Um, but this is the Smashbox 24-hour primer. I'm using this to conceal underneath my eyes as well as to highlight my face. I have a whole video on highlighting and contouring. If you are interested, check it out. It is on my channel. It's kind of light. The video came out really light, and I don't know why. Um, I think because I had my window open. Usually when I film, I have my windows, a window in my beauty room. I keep it um, the blinds closed. But I had it open that day because it was a really pretty day, and I think it just added too much light. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to set that with my IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores setting powder and my beauty blender. And you guys know I do this trick a lot. I like to set underneath my eyes as well as the lines in my forehead with a damp beauty blender and some powder. Then I'm going to go in and do my brows. I skipped over that part because I have an in-depth tutorial about how I do my brows up on my channel. You guys should go check it out. Um, so I am just a little bit past due for a brow wax. I haven't had time. I've been so busy with clients back to back that I haven't had time for the, one of the girls to um, straighten them up for me. So I went and I just kind of concealed over some of the little baby fine blonde hairs that are growing in that need to be waxed out. But this also helps in a look like this too because it helps to um, highlight the brow bone so that the eyes really stand out. I'm going to go over top of that with this little Target brush and this is a MAC shadow and it is called, uh, 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 oh my gosh, I'm having like a total brain fart. What is this shadow called? Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't think of it. Uh, it'll be in the description box down below. So I'm going to go in with this short smudger brush and that same blue brown pigment and I'm going to put this in my waterline kind of if you have sensitive eyes don't put shadows on your waterline because it does like it does irritate the eyes just a little bit like I do find myself having to like kind of blink some of it out but I wanted there to be a little pop of blue so then I went back in with the um color bitten by makeup geek and I smudged this along my lower lash line because what I was trying to create with this look was I wanted it to be like a circular look all the way around my eye with that red orange and then I wanted the blue to be staying right right in the center Now I'm going to go in with this pencil brush. This pencil brush I actually got in a boxy charm, and I absolutely love it. I will link it in the description box down below. It's the perfect pencil brush. It's not too soft, and it's not too hard. And I'm going to take this same red shade that I used up top, and I'm going to smudge this in with Bitten, kind of just replicating what I did on the top on the bottom too. And then I take this Morphe brush and I really go to town smoking this out because I wanted it to be super smoky and dramatic and I wanted the color to extend way far beyond my actual lash line, kind of out a little bit and down a little bit because I wanted it to be really dramatic. But yet still wearable. I mean, I would I would totally wear this look out, but I know not, it's not a look for everybody, but I wanted it to be nice and dramatic. And 
then I'm going to go in and put a little bit of black eyeliner in my waterline just because I felt like it didn't pop enough. And I'm going to go contour my face with my NARS Eda brush and the Wet n Wild Contour Palette. In, pa palette. Pa yeah, that, hello, Brooke. Contour Palette in the shade Dulce de Leche. And I'm going to carve out my cheekbones. Then I also contour my forehead as well as my jawline. When you're contouring your jawline, it's really important to make sure that you um, make sure to blend the shadows down your neck just so that it doesn't look um, crazy like you've got this dark like color right underneath your chin. And I'm going to be using my Sonia Kashuk blush brush along with the Too Faced Love Flush blush in the shade Baby Love. I wanted a kind of neutral color blush. And then I'm going to go in, and I wanted a neutral color highlight too, so I'm using the Becca highlight in the shade Opal. I like this highlight because I feel like it's not too peach, it's not too pink, it's not too like colored. It's more of a neutral highlight. So I'm going to be highlighting my um, cheekbones, by the bridge of my nose, in between my brows, my cubist bow, and my chin. And I'm going to go on and pop on these lashes. These are Ardell lashes. And I don't wear lashes every day, you guys know, but with looks like this, I like to wear lashes because I feel like it just steps up the look like an extra notch. Then I just set my face with the Wet n Wild setting spray. And after that's dried, I go in and I do my lips. This is the Milani um, lip pencil. I think it's like in the shade neutral or natural, something like that. I wanted a really neutral lip because the eyes were so much. So I just go in and I'm slightly overdrawing, slightly overdrawing. Then I go in and I just fill it in because I'm going to go over top of this with a gloss. This gloss right here I got in a BoxyCharm. I can't remember what the brand of it is because it's not right here in front of me, but I will link it down below. I love this gloss. It's a really, really pretty neutral color, but I do not like the applicator of this thing. It is so flimsy. It's like almost difficult to apply the product. I end up having to use my finger half the time. And voila, that is the finished look. So I'm going to go and finish my hair, and I'll be right back. All right, so that's going to complete this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video inspired you to use some color in your looks if it's something that you always wanted to do. Um, you're just maybe not sure quite where to start or how to use it. Hopefully this look gave you some inspiration to start adding some color into your looks. I'm going to be using this palette a lot coming up on my channel because I am totally inspired by these um, blue and teal shades down here too. So stay tuned for that video. Um, thank you guys so, so much for... Hello, stop falling. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Um, please give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to see um, more videos like this with a little bit more of a colorful look. Click the subscribe button to see more videos from me. Don't forget that SPF is your best friend, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.